Welcome to Run Jump Chuck. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo. And I'll tell you what, Robbo, the summer of athletics is alive. It is, mate. Yeah, well, look, I actually thought it was the winter of athletics. Uh, down there in Hobart, it was very chilly on the weekend, but great to get the tour started. And speaking of the tour starter, mate, down there, Briggs uh, 2015, the 26th edition, mate, there were some wonderful things going on on the track and the field. What were some of the highlights for you? Let's start with the run. Yeah, mate, well, looking uh, at the run, uh, Jack Hale, all the, a lot of the talk was around the speedster from, uh, from Hobart, and uh, he didn't disappoint. 10.50 uh, up against... Uh, a field of no one that could catch him, essentially. So, great run from him, and we had a chance to catch up with him after his race. And how'd it feel? Yeah, really happy with it. I mean, I wasn't too confident coming into it, but going, coming over the 10-5 in today's conditions, I'm really happy with it. How excited are you to get back in that sandpit? Uh, really excited to get back into it tomorrow. So, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to go, to be honest. Not, not much training. I think I've had two sessions since I've been injured three months, so hopefully come out with something decent and maybe push for a world youth qualifier. And other highlights with the run, Mossy, uh, the women's 1,500 metres, Maddie Heiner taking that one out, and Brett for Robbo Robinson getting the win in the men's 5,000. Great run by him. Now, whilst it was great on the track, Robbo, it was also awesome in the field, and what I'm calling the princess of the pit. We saw her relaunch her uh, career once again coming off injury. It was none other than Brooke Stratton. Yeah, great to see Brooke getting the jumping gear Sandy once again, and uh, she put an impressive jump out there, 6.42, which early season coming off a, a serious injury, uh, stress fractures in the back. She will be delighted with that and uh, we had a chat with her as, as well. Yeah, I didn't expect to jump that far today so I'm, I'm very happy with the 642. Um, the back's holding up really well which is the main thing and um, the rest of my body's feeling good. Um, I think it was because I did everything right with my rehab so yeah, I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling really good at the moment. She's looking great, mate. Good to see you back in action. Yeah, looking forward to a massive season ahead for young Brooke Stratton. Now, we've done the run, we've done the jump. It's time for us now to go over to the Chucks and I think a few PBs out there as well. Yeah, there was uh, a national record, in fact, the under-20s national record in the Hammer. It went Alex Hulley, the redhead from New South Wales, I know a personal favourite of yours, and she threw a massive Chuck out there of 62.02. Uh, sticking with the Chucks, Birkenhead, Damien Birkenhead, or Birkenballs, as you'll find him on Twitter. He's another red nut as well, Well, he? he is, mate. Yeah, new PB for him. Uh, of 1984, so great to see him. He's coming to the Hunter this weekend. Can't wait to see what he can produce there. Uh, but the big one, Matty Denny, came down from Queensland, uh, throwing in the cold, not ideal for him, but he threw a PB in the hammer of a 67-62. So he's also in action this week with the discus. Look, uh, your hair's looking fantastic, <laughs> Matthew Denny. We're the comp was a bit of a um, stuff up. The first throw was 64, and then the rest of the comp was shambles everything fell apart but that last throw had a started up a clap and had a crack but obviously paid off and I actually feel a bit bad for taking it off Huey in his hometown but it, I was happy with the PB because I've been training so well the last few months. And it's a huge meet down there at Briggs, big for their field events. It's a massive week in athletics as well mate, what's been happening off the pitch? Well a couple of things, uh, one thing that came out about from Briggs, uh, a little bit of uh, comment commentary I guess on Facebook, this was from Josh Ross. Uh, you know, Australian sprinting legend, and uh, he had his nose out of joint a little bit by some comments from Fox Sports saying that Jack Hale had taken down a field of grown men and uh, that, you know, he'd had uh, an amazing performance. And yes, it was a great run, uh, but a bit of misreporting there, I think, and that uh, got the bristles up from the boss. And uh, he said, look, we need more respect for the senior sprinters here in Australia. So look, it's going to be interesting to see where this develops. Can we get Hailstorm and the boss on the track at the I'd same like, time? I'd like to see it, mate. I'm a huge fan of uh, the boss. He's a local favourite here up in Newcastle as well as Jack Hale. So look, a lot of progression for young Jack to, to get down to those low times, but it's going to be sensational. But let's look at it. We want to see it by the end of this season. Hail v Boss. There we go. And also on Facebook, Mossy, we received this apology from Sally Pearson. Who? People that watched episode one. Uh, Sally Pearson, Super Sally Pearson. Well, she uh, she sent us this apology. Terribly sorry uh, that she forgot our names on live TV when she got interviewed after that gold medal run over there in Glasgow. If you're not, not sure what we're talking about, check out episode one. It'll all be there. As you found out in episode one, I'm going to jump in the car with an athlete each week. This week, I spoke to a the current national record holder in the 10,000 metres, it was Benny Saint. And uh, you see the picture there of him naked. Uh, the whole edition you can catch on our YouTube channel, but here's a little bit of a highlight, which includes uh, getting up to Falls Creek, his favourite bands, and uh, a certain sport that he might have played if he wasn't uh, in athletics. A lot of different sports. Played a lot of basketball, raced BMX, 
swimming, tennis, all that sort of stuff. So. Well, let's let's go back to basketball, mate. So uh, I'm assuming you're probably one of the guards. Point guard, point yeah. Point guard on yeah. point. Yep. Trash talking. Always. It was uh, a lot of fun, you know. Basketball was huge. I was growing up in Jordan's era, and uh, yeah, we were massively into it. My parents would beg me to stop playing out in the backyard because the, the ball was hitting the wall, and I was just, you know, driving everyone nuts. But I wasn't one of the standout juniors, but picked up a few state and national medals. The idea was always to get into running seriously when I finished high school, but yeah, that didn't really happen. And yeah, I think a lot of people already know the story. Had a few years off, um, living a very different lifestyle, and didn't get back into it until 2006 and uh, that's when I sort of joined with my coach Sean Williams and started taking things pretty seriously. Yeah, I remember reading in Runners World, I think it was, or well, it might have been Run for Your Life, I'm not sure about you climbing a tree in McCaddy Park in Bathurst <laughs> one night, is this correct? Yeah, that actually made the Daily Telegraph. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, yeah, we, oh, I was, we used to do these pub runs at university and you know, you'd go from all the different pubs around town, you'd have to pass, pass through McCaddy Park and I think I was telling one of my mates that I, I used to climb trees like the one there and he, he didn't believe me so I took his hat off and climbed to the top of the tree and put it on top of the tree and sat there for a day or two and then blew down and he was joking he said oh we should put something up there that's going to stay there a little bit longer so the next weekend um, got a milk crate and climbed up the tree and put the milk crate up there and uh, to tie it up I took the belt off that I had on and so I tied it on with my belt. <laughs> Problem was when I was climbing down my pants kept falling down. Oh, so nice. Made it down alive and then uh, yeah, it was kind of a bit of a landmark in Bathurst. People would go and look at the crate at the top of this tree. So, our uh, favourite band, mate? What's uh, What would be... Mm. What, do you, what do you like to listen to? That's a tough one. I was saying the other day, someone asked me what, what band I listened to when I was young that, that I can still put on and, and really enjoy. And I think Chili Peppers has got to be yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, seen them live a number of times. And, wow. You know, a lot of bands I go through and then I get sick of them and won't listen to them again. But Chili Peppers, I can chuck that on. There's been a couple of runs on those training camps where there's 200 people out running yeah, together. Right. And, you know, I think there was over, well over 100 at one of our K sessions and that sort of thing. So it brings everyone together and you, you train hard and it's pretty relaxing up there. There's not much else to do, so you recover well. and Just a good vibe and it's a good way to start the year. You know, January is often a time where you get easily distracted. Back in Sydney, everyone wants yeah. to come around for a barbecue, go out for beers, do this and that. But if you're in falls, you're, you're just working hard and getting off to a good start. So. I think this is my sixth or seventh year in a row I've been down there. Can you remember your first time going there and what it was like? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we went down, a uh, group of us from Sydney. I think we were only there for 10 days or so. And I did what's quite typical of someone down at Falls for the first time. Climbed up a tree and put a... <laughs> no. <laughs> not this time. Um, not the first time. Tried to tried to train with guys I wasn't quite ready to run yeah. with. But, uh, who? who? Oh, there was, I think Mottram was down there that year. Yep. Collis, um, Troopy, Scott Westcott, guys yep. like that, Marty Dent. Um, they probably just went a bit above and beyond what I was able to at the time, but loved every minute of it and came away pretty sore. But uh, yeah, I think I ran a PB not long after coming back. Well, Mossy, great work once again. I can't wait to see which athlete you get in the car next. Uh, a little di disappointing, Benny wasn't dressed up like he was in the calendar there, uh, but he did have the Naked Runners hat on, so that was great to see. Well, if you watch the full edition on YouTube, you'll find out that, uh, yeah, Mr. January, find out a little bit more about that. We'd also like to uh, put a shout out there to uh, Benny and Gary Tiger Howard who have just started up their own uh, running group called uh, Run Crew. You can, uh, they have camps, they have uh, weekly training sessions. Just catch them on Facebook at Run Crew One. You wouldn't have seen this, Mossy, but I actually sent them a private message during the week. Uh, their, their summer plan is to get you under 20 minutes for park run. So you're already uh, enrolled, mate, and I look forward to seeing your progress soon. Now, last week, bro, we did the same thing, run, jump, chuck of the week. We saw it was the Vic Mitchell moment, mate. Can we top that? I wonder if we possibly can. Oh, look, this one is special. This is, uh, this is one that happens each year in Australia, and it's down there at Port Lincoln in South Australia. It's the annual Tunarama Festival, and what they do is they get this big bluefin tuna, and you see how far you can chuck it. Now, this year, a uh, husband and wife team managed to win, the Stauntons, but a couple of years ago, we had Timmy Dryson, oh, Timmy. Uh, Australian national hammer throwing champion just happened to be in Port Lincoln on this weekend and uh, let's see what happened next. The watching crowd braved the fishy stench and stuck around for the men's event. Local favourite Matt Staunton rewarded their loyalty by sending the beastly fish towards them. He finished second. But the winner of the hotly contested men's event was also from the Australian capital. 
Tim Dryson, a current national title holder in hammer throwing, made the most of his sporting background to hurl the tuna 30.26 metres back into the sea to win the title at his first attempt. Could you be back next year? Definitely. Love the place. Uh, love Port Lincoln. It's a beautiful place. The whole Tuna Rama Festival has been great. Food's been absolutely awesome and uh, we've really enjoyed our time here. That's an awesome uh, lob there of the tuna. I should say chuck there, Robbo. But uh, I wonder what other kind of animals we could see thrown out Well, there. why not? And uh, I mean, on that one, I think it was frozen. Uh, and so, yeah, what about some live animals as well? Uh, possibly animal cruelty mightn't like that. So anyway, yeah, why not? Opens up all sorts of avenues. But that's another great one for run, jump, chuck of the week. And well done, Timmy Dryson. Now, Robbo, it's time for us to turn our attention to the next stop on the tour. And toot toot, it's coming to our hometown here in Newcastle, the Hunter region as well. It's the Hunter Track Classic. Yes, mate. Oh, this is this is the standout uh, sporting event on the calendar here in Newcastle. We're talking about it's bigger than the Asian Cup. Oh, it is. You know, we have the Socceroos here. They couldn't even get a weekend. They were here on a Tuesday night. Uh, this is the main event, Saturday night, Hunter Sports Centre, and uh, can't wait to, to strap in for another huge Hunter Track Classic. And it's what they're calling a Glasgow reunion. We've got national champions. We've got Commonwealth Games uh, champions as well. It's going to be awesome. Let's start with the runners. Well, you, well, you, you mentioned Glasgow, Mossy. I've got a little oh, friend here. he's back. Yeah, well, if it's a Glasgow reunion, it, it wouldn't be a, a reunion without Clyde, the, the mascot from the Glasgow Com game. So there, yeah, Clyde, you can have a little little seat up the back there. But yes, mate, it's going to be great. I think 23 uh, Com games representatives are going to be in town. So that's uh, absolutely fantastic. A couple of things that have got me excited, the Women's 800. We talked all about it last year as being one of the standout events. Well, it looks like it's shaping up to be a cracker. Uh, young Brittany McGowan, she'll be coming uh, to town. Here we go. She took it out last year. Uh, it really put her on the, her name on the map, and it was great to have a chat with her last year. I'm expecting big things from Britt again this season. She's training down in Canberra now with with Lissy Duncan, who's also taking part. Georgia Wassell's in the mix. Catherine Katzenavakis, uh, an all-star field, and watch out when that women's 800 is on. Also, Mossy in the run, if I can slip it in, the two by 100. It's relay time. Have you ever seen a two by 100 relay? Uh, no, actually not since 1982 when right. they had a meet out in Karkul. Did they? Yes, it was very uh, innovative back in the day as they are at Karkul. Well, we're going to have Young Hale, Jack Hale, a hailstorm, teaming up with Jordan Shelley. They're called the Hailcopter. They'll be going up against Browning and Curry. And uh, Robbie Crowther's in there as well. whole bunch. Jin Soo Jung, he'll be in there as well. So can't wait to see. Hopefully there's no dropped buttons and they can get that baton around cleanly. And we're going to see some fast, fast times. I think the national 2 by one record for the men is uh, a touch under 20 seconds. I'm calling it. I reckon it'll go. Well, it's going to be interesting because uh, Jugi ran, I think, a 10.42 last week, which is close to the, the record uh, for the 100 metres at the track. Yeah, and that was just to run down to the shops to, uh, to get the... <laughs> to get, get his the, new gel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, he loves his hair. Now, mate, also on the track, we, call, we classify this as running because that's what uh, our para-athletes do, classify it. Kurt Fernley, named Nova Castrian of the Year uh, on the Australia Day Awards just gone. He's making his debut at the Hunter Track Classic in the men's wheelchair mile. All-star uh, cast of uh, wheelchair athletes in that one. Can't wait to see how they go in the, in the wheelies mile. Absolutely. Now, I think we've got enough time for the jumpers and the chuckers, uh, but it is an absolute jumpers delight. We had a chance to uh, be, I guess, front row seats to watch a gold medal last year awarded to a young high jumper from Victoria, and she's going to be jumping as well this weekend with a bit of innovation at the Hunter Track Classic. Yeah, you're talking about the leaper from Leon Gatha down there in South Gippsland in Victoria, and it is Eleanor Patterson. And I'm going to name her the jewel of the jumpers. There you go. Well, why not, mate? And I think, look, the meat record, I think it's 187. That'll probably go in the warm-ups, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> Eleanor uh, jumped a 191 to win the Vic Country Champs on the weekend just gone. Uh, PB of 196. Uh, national record of 198. I reckon that can go this year. That might even go this weekend as well if conditions are right. And yes, Mossy, we're playing a bit of music to rev them up. Uh, Eleanor Patterson's favourite song off the top of my head is Take Me Over by Peking Duck. So uh, with that added bit of incentive and getting the crowd revved up and you'll be there uh, firing them up as well, I reckon it's going to be, we're set for a big, big night. Oh, you're pumped, my friend. I am. You? I want to, I'm jumping now yeah, out of my skin. Out of your skin, exactly right. And so is Jumpy too. Yes. Over there in the well, back he's back. He's we'll back. We'll talk about that at another time. And uh, 
Bit of a fact for you, 196 is Eleanor's PB. That would have been a world record back in 1976. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so fact. Yeah, fact. Um, now, look, let's. Uh, we can't leave the chuckers out. Um, and again, innovation at the Hunter Track Classic. They call it the people's meet, the athletes meet. They love it because there's a little bit of a relaxed atmosphere and there will be a game for the chuckers as well. There will, mate. And uh, we're seeing a comeback of our mate, Birkenballs. He'll be back there uh, throwing the shot put around. Maybe another PB for him this week. Anything to add? <laughs> Good. Uh, and as well, uh, in the chucking, well, the men's precision javelin, we saw that in action last year. This is a case where the men will throw their jabs as a bit of a warm-up at a target, and it's, there's cash on the line. This year, we're bringing a scarecrow in. His name's Glenn, uh, Glenn Dale, and they'll be throwing the, 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 the javelin at the scarecrow, and if they can hit him, it's 150 cash, like I, that. I thought it was 150 grand. Well, I think it's 150-something. Actually, no, no, no. It was 200 Cents? before the start of the show. And <laughs> yeah, now, but uh, the it's, it's down to 150. The day Robo taxes come it's, in. It's down 50. But Hamish Peacock, he'll be there. Uh, and Benny Baker. Benny Baker. Look, I can't wait to see. Hamish, obviously the winner from last year, 79.90. He's already throwing well over that uh, with a you know with an altered technique now. And so we're waiting to see what he can do. I reckon he'll hit 86 very, very shortly. Might be this weekend. Now, Robbo, we love a new segment on Run, Jump, Chuck. We've got a new one that's been sparked down at Briggs, mate. It's called the Caption Competition. It's all done on social media. Tell us how it uh, happens. Yes, mate. Well, here's a photo that was taken after Jack Hale's race. It was decided, well, look, what can you come up with? Creative captions, send them in. And we've got some comments on Instagram. And uh, I'm, I, can get, I can tell you today, Mossy, that we've got a winner, a select panel of judges. It was Scotty Westcott was the, uh, the prime judge. And uh, he has selected Ben Moreau. Oh, so congratulations, well done, Benny. Benny. And uh, we can just see there, his comment was, nah, -uh, girlfriend, I ain't doing that on first date. <laughs> so Benny Moreau... You get yourself the Naked Runners headband pack and uh, you've got the black and white headbands there. You'll be taking them home. Hopefully, we'll see them on his head next race. Well, that's all we've got time for this week on Run, Jump, Chuck. Looking forward to catching you on Saturday night for the Hunter Track Classic live stream online or on your mobile device. Well, hang on, Mossy, one more thing. I've just got one more segment I want to slip in here. It's called Athletes Got Talent. Uh, I've been seeing so many of these talented athletes. They're good at many, many other things. One of them's music. We've seen Kim Mickle playing Metallica. We've seen Benny Haradine's pretty handy on the guitar as well. So I packed the guitar, took it down to Hobart, and just to see which athletes we could unearth. And uh, we managed to find one. But if you know of any athletes out there that might be pretty handy on the guitar or the triangle or... Kazoo or Could be anything. Order. Let us know because you get, on, get in touch on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. We want to hook them up and we want to get them on the show. Uh, but this was a very, very special performance enjoyed by an audience of Benny St. Lawrence who actually threw, you'll see at the end, throws a little uh, a tip into the, into the guitar case. But this is Lissy Duncan with her rendition of Pumped Up Kicks. And as always, guys, don't forget to run, jump, and chuck.